Well, good morning and welcome to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam. We are broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. And coming up in a little bit, we'll be talking with former congressman and current chair of the Steuben County Republican Party, Joe Sempolinski, and we have a lot to cover. And thank you, by the way, I had some people reach out with some questions for Joe. Joe has a unique um, experience because he was in Congress. He's still active in politics, so he, he has um, a lot of different avenues he can answer questions. And if you want to get involved locally, he's the perfect person to talk to. So we'll be talking with him a little bit later on. Now, in the international front, Secretary of State Blinken has arrived in Israel to show off solidarity following Hamas terrorist attacks. The Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, landed in Israel Thursday morning as a show of support for the longtime ally following Hamas's terrorist attack on the country on Saturday. He's going to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, President Isaac Herzog. Um, so I'm sure we'll hear more on that. I'm just going to give you a couple quick updates because when Joe's on the program, uh, we normally spend a lot of time together. So I'm going to be taking some uh, breaks early on. Uh, but this is scary. The Middle East Media Research Institute is reporting that Hamas is calling for a global day of jihad, meaning a holy war, on Friday the 13th. Uh, tomorrow, this has caused um, New York PD. They have ordered all cops to report in uniform after ex-Hamas chief calls for global protests. Um, that's starting tomorrow again, Friday the 13th in anticipation of potential unrest stemming from a call by the former leader of Hamas to stage global demonstrations in support of Palestinians. Quote, all uniformed members of service in every rank will perform duty in the uniform of the day and be prepared for deployment. Now, again, I'm going through a lot of things here quickly. And we are going to talk about uh, the Middle East. We're going to talk about Israel with the former congressman uh, when he comes on the program over Zoom. Now, the U.S. is concerned about attacks on American troops, according to Politico, um, in the Middle East amid the crisis this coming, like I said, from Politico. The Pentagon is concerned about the potential for new attacks on American troops stationed in the Middle East from Iran and its proxy forces as the conflict between Israel and Hamas militants escalate in an already tumultuous region. I'm, I want to talk, uh, and by the way, tragically, um, we learned yesterday that the American death toll in Israel has increased to now 22 Americans killed in that terrorist attack. Biden's saying there's no justification for terrorism, no excuse, and the type of terrorism that was exhibited here was just beyond the pale. My commitment to Israel's security and the safety of Jewish people is unshakable. There seems to be a mission from some in the media to distance Iran uh, from these attacks. I don't know if it's to protect Biden because of that $6 billion um, unfreezing of assets. I worded that strange, but uh, I'm not sure if that's the reason. Well, we're going to talk about it here in just a second. Let me take a break. Like I said, I'm going to go through a couple of breaks quickly because I, I want to talk with Joe Sempolinski as long as we possibly can. So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV. Big Fox, stay with us. Look at that beautiful view of Marcus Street in Corning, our new roof cam. If you haven't been joining us all week, it's a little, little foggy out there this morning. Okay, uh, we have Joe Semplinski coming up. He's waiting patiently in Zoom. I just wanted to mention because I highlighted it before we went to break. Uh, CNN is reporting that Iran intelligence suggests, this initial U.S. intel suggests Tehran was surprised by the Hamas attack on Israel. Now, the New York Post had a editorial board said is this is the intel community which unfortunately we know uh, some of the lack of and it's when i say unfortunately it's, it's by their own doing but lack of faith in some of these uh, government agencies is the intel community whitewashing iran's 10-7 role to please the white house 
Just for starters, they said, the Wall Street Journal broke the news that officers of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for months joined in planning the attack and gave the final okay. So is the U.S. intelligence claiming those reporters just made it up? This is a great piece. We don't have time for it because we've got to get to Joe. But if Biden and his people actually buy this Iran was surprised to nonsense, they're even more hopeless than we feared. Let's take another break because Joe Sempolinski is going to join us. When we come back, this is Frankly Speaking on WYDC-TV, Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. Joining us over Zoom, former Congressman Joe Sempolinski. Joe, thanks for being on the show. Frank, now I can see everything that's going on in Market Street by watching look, your show. It looks a little foggy out there this morning. It's, it's, a, it's fall. You know, yep. it's October. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a little crisp in the air. Yeah. Leaves are turning. It's beautiful. Yes. I, it's hard to believe because I was talking with Allison Hunt just yesterday. Can you imagine it's less than a month to Election Day? Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you're I'm you're, you're counting down the days. Figuring out what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's uh, And it's it's an interesting year. The year where you mentioned Allison. Allison's our candidate for county legislature in the city of Corning. And I recommend everybody get out to vote for her. We're going to certainly be trying to get the votes out for her. Mm -hmm. We have races in Whalen Cohocton, um, and we have races in Cornell uh, and other places throughout the county. And uh, it's a year where there's not these matchups like the presidency or the governor or, or what have you on the ballot. So uh, it's a little bit more of an effort to get people out to vote. Uh, but in November, we do have a general election, and we have offices where one vote can tip it, mm -hmm. offices that uh, directly impact your day-to-day -day life, uh, even in some ways more so than state or federal offices. So. And I know we normally say this towards the end, but it's not too late for people to get involved. That's true. I mean, for instance, just with Allison, we're going to be doing things, uh, getting people out to vote. If you're in the Corning area, uh, you can help her. If you're in the other side of the county, certainly, as I mentioned, we have races over there. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's, it's never too late, uh, even though it is uh, what people might consider, uh, who are less you know, politically active, a more quiet year. Uh, this lays the groundwork for the presidential year yes. uh, next year, where we'll have the presidency of the U.S. Senate. We'll have uh, U.S. House, the entire state legislature. There will be a lot uh, that may be names that uh, people are familiar with on the ballot uh, next year. Uh, but what leads to that is building the apparatus and getting people used to uh, the mechanisms of getting out the vote uh, this year. Yes. So, and also before we uh, go to much heavier topics, but you have your big dinner coming up. Yeah. Uh, a week from yesterday, uh, on the 18th, uh, Sudan and Shemong, uh, Republican parties, uh, we, over the last couple of years, have combined our annual dinner. I love that. A bigger turnout, I think bigger event. Uh, it's, it went really well last year. Mm -hmm. We did in Shemung. This year we're doing it in Saban. It's going to be at the American Legion uh, in South Corning there. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be on the 18th. Our guest speaker is the Republican leader in the state Senate, uh, Rob Hort uh, from Niagara Falls. And he's a very dynamic speaker. I just actually was, I happened to run into him at a meeting in Buffalo yesterday mm -hmm. in the course of my official duties. And uh, he will do a very good job uh, next week. And we're expecting a bunch of other local politicians uh, sure. uh, that we can sort of hear what's going on and, and the previews of, of next year and also, again, the important elections this year. Okay, now I, this is completely changing topics. It's tough to segue. I found that to be the case this last this whole week because of Israel. And I know yeah. uh, we have to talk about this and we want to talk about this and it, it just expose because I think the media, Joe, and this is kind of the way I've been talking about it, the media, specifically like an MSNBC, it, it's, and now CNN saying that, uh, well, Iran was surprised by it too. I just feel the coverage between the media and college campuses and it's it's heartbreaking this anti this streak of anti-semitism yeah it's pretty distressing uh if you if you can't be appalled by beheaded children exactly uh, um uh, well over a thousand civilians just butchered uh i don't know what moral compass you're operating on yeah and you know so the, the reaction of people is like, well, you know, there's people that sort of have this perverse logic that somehow because of some political grievance, people have uh, deserved this in some way. Listen, Hamas 
is a terrorist group. They proved that yes. beyond all shadow of a doubt for the whole world mm -hmm. uh, this past week. Um, and it is unacceptable, horrific terrorism yes. is what we saw in Israel uh, last week. And, and Israel is uh, now going to do what it needs to do to defend itself. Mm -hmm. And it's going to do what it needs to do. It's going to eliminate the Hamas group. And, and remember, if we were playing by Hamas's rules, right? They would just, you know, th their goal is is to wipe out the state of Israel. They just want to. They're, and they state that they make that. Yeah, group. they make that very clear. Um, they do not hide that. Right. That that is their stated purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, yeah. you know, projecting anything onto them. That is what they say their purpose is. And so uh, Israel certainly is a. A functioning democracy mm -hmm. is our ally. Uh, we in the United States have the largest uh, Jewish population outside of the state of Israel, and the largest portion of that is in New York State, right. uh, especially uh, downstate, certainly throughout New York State. So I have nothing but sympathy for um, what Jewish people are going through right now, seeing mm -hmm. this hard. It's a statement of the state of Israel is this is the worst day of loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty horrific thing to contemplate uh certainly i in my political career i've uh, been a supporter yeah. of the state of israel uh, as an ally as a stable democracy as uh a society that's trying to function in a very dangerous uh portion of the world and uh, certainly they're going to need do what they need to do to protect themselves obviously everybody wants to minimize uh civilian uh casualties yeah. i certainly hope that Egypt will maybe let some of the civilians from Gaza into Egypt because mm -hmm. they also have a border with Gaza. Uh, but uh, I am profoundly troubled. I've been watching it very closely mm -hmm. on social media and news media and some of the things that I've seen, you've seen, the entire world has seen uh, turns my stomach, yep. especially when, when children are massacred. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know any excuse to ever kill a child no ever so there, there's no there is nothing that can be there's no justification just right. there's absolutely yeah. no. and then you have um and in full disclosure i let my harper's bazaar subscription run out a long time ago but the editor of harper's bazaar was saying that shutting off power in gaza was the most inhumane thing she's ever seen well i, I the most inhumane thing i've yeah. ever seen is sort of got that bar got raised yeah. this week by what hamas did and let's not forget they have hostages. Yes. They have kidnapped whole Israeli families, uh, uh, women, children, mm -hmm. and they're holding them in Gaza. And the latest news I saw this morning was the siege, the, the state of demands of the state of Israel is let the hostages go. Right. And we'll give you some food and turn the power back on. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty reasonable yes. request. Let the civilians go. And remember, when Israel... And again, nobody wants any civilians killed mm -hmm. in any anywhere. No. But when Israel attacks, they warn and say, hey, yes. get the civilians out. Hamas kills civilians, one, and two, tells their civilians to not leave because they want to use them as human shields for propaganda purposes. Yes. So that's the type of perverse barbarism that we are dealing with with Hamas. So um, here's a simple rule for the people, for the folks. Yeah. The guys that cut the heads off kids are the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. If you want to cut through all the baloney as to uh, <laughs> yes. uh, the, the complicated situation in the Middle East, that's a simple rule. If you see yeah. somebody busting into a house, burning kids alive and chopping their heads off, yes, they're the bad guys. That is as simple as that. And you look at just the beginning of this. I mean, you, you have young people at a festival just having right. fun and festival watch for peace yeah a yeah. The, the festival about was to have peace in the middle east i'm telling you and it, like you said i i find it a struggle i know i have to do it and we all should do it it is a struggle to go to certain websites and to go even to watch the news uh, not because we shouldn't see it but my to reiterate it your heart literally breaks when you see this yeah, this is this is a whole new level of it is. of sickening because usually when a terrorist group sort of commits war crimes mm -hmm. They try and hide it. Yeah. Hamas live streams it. Yeah. And they want you to see it for whatever reason. And it's it's really it's really sickening. And then also what I have heard in, is some of the timing of this was because Israel was on the verge of normalizing relations with Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And so 
the timing may have been based on Hamas didn't want peace yeah. between the Saudis and the Israelis. It's, so they, they butchered over a thousand civilians be, to prevent peace. That's the type of that's what we're dealing with. Hamas. That, I mean, Hamas is a terrorist organization, is a criminal organization, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that the prime minister made it very clear mm -hmm. yesterday that he's going to root them out to the last. Yes. Person. Yes. We, I've got a lot more to talk about with this, but Joe, we got to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Have oh, hold on. We're about uh, to go on. They, <laughs> Don't, they hold on real quick, Joe. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam. Joe and I were talking off the air. Sorry, Joe. I was, we always get talking off the air and we forget that we have yeah. to do a show. we got to do a TV show. <laughs> Wait, this is show business. Um, oh, my God. So I want to talk a few things on, on different levels about what's going on in Israel. And I see this morning at CNN, uh, they're trying to suggest that Iran had no idea this was going to happen. So is that the new... Is that going to be, uh, to protect Biden, is that going to be the new talking point that, boy, it shocked Iran as much as it shocked anybody? Yeah, I don't know if that holds a lot of water with the world. No. Um, everybody knows that Iran is uh, the biggest patron of Hamas. And if, and the U.S. government's been sort of saying, oh, this was their assets and we haven't unfrozen them yet. And, well, here, let's do a little thought experiment. Right. Let's imagine mm -hmm. I told you that this goofy old man <laughs> Was you was going to unlock six billion dollars for you in a few months? Sure. Well, suddenly, Frank, you don't you're not as stressed about your finances because sure. you know you got six billion dollars sure. coming. I was already Whatever spending the money from Powerball. I didn't even end up winning that. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, if you had money set aside to pay your rent, mm -hmm. money set aside to buy food, you know, money set aside for let's call them humanitarian purposes. <laughs> right. Well, maybe now, because you know you got six billion coming, mm -hmm. you can use those to go buck wild, yeah, doing whatever debauched thing that you want to do. Sure. Maybe fun terrorists. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. No. Maybe, ladies and gentlemen, that is an economic lesson in the fungibility of money, which apparently the Biden administration simply does not understand. Mm -hmm. If you have money coming, yes, you can take the money you were going to use for the purposes for which that money has been released to you and use that money for something else. Yes. Which is why if you inject one penny mm -hmm. into any aspect, even as positive as it might be, humanitarian purposes, whatever you want to call it, you inject one penny into the Iranian regime, you are funding terrorism. Yes. Yes. Because the Iranian regime funds terrorism and money is liquid. It can go anywhere. It can flow. And you can offset each other. That is what is going on here. They knew, they knew they had six billion of yeah. their money getting unfrozen. So now all of a sudden, Look Hamas what has the biggest terrorist attack in the mm -hmm. world since 9/11. Mm -hmm. Proportionally for the state of Israel, significantly bigger than 9/11. If you do the math, right, this is like 45,000 Americans being killed if you do it wow. based on population. Wow. So this is this is a huge um, uh, terrorist attack, almost unprecedented in that part of the world. And uh, the, the, the Biden administration will tell you, you're crazy. We talk about we're monitoring that money. It hasn't been released yet. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if they're right, that hasn't been released. Well, maybe it should never be. Released. Right. And isn't it and, kind of and, nice? And that maybe we shouldn't make it a practice to pay Iran billions of dollars for hostages. Yeah. Because what does that do? That creates a market mm -hmm. for, for hostages. hostages. Yeah. I thought like, we didn't pay Iran. They don't have the basic understanding of how economics work in the Biden administration. Yeah. yeah, and that's what the one piece from the New York Post editorial board said, that if they really, and uh, let me quote it because I have it right here in front of me, if Biden and his people actually buy this Iran was surprised to nonsense, they're even more hopeless than we feared. Right. I mean, it's, right. but I'm glad to see that Republicans are calling for a refreezing of th this money, but also you are seeing a few Democrats. I think they even realize, well, this is really, could come back to haunt us. Yeah, I mean, this has been an issue where you don't find any Republicans mm -hmm. that really that are not um, supportive in some way, shape or form, the different flavors of it, sure. of, of Israel. And I'll be fair, um, a good chunk of the Democrats as well. Yeah. Um, and But you have this now this yeah. growing sort of Hamas caucus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was I saw a clip from Fox 
uh, where the Fox reporter was um, falling behind, you know, through the tunnel into the Capitol, uh, Rashida Tlaib, yeah. uh, Congresswoman. I saw that. Saying, do you do you denounce babies getting their heads cut off? And that's a pretty simple question. And if, if a reporter asked me that, <laughs> I'd have a pretty simple answer. Well, yes, I denounce yeah. that for your answer. And she wouldn't Wait. answer. No. And and so you have people that are both siding this. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 oh well, you know, both sides, whatever. No, 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 no. No, they, no. They, they chop kids off kids. You know, they lost all credibility, all morals. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. That, that, that There's no they, benefit they of the go. doubt. They yeah. gotta go. Hamas has gotta go. Mm-hmm. And so to see that type of perverse moral perspective yeah. from academia, from certain elements of the Democratic Party. Um, from the far left, um, that you know somehow a baby in a village in southern Israel is some sort of horrific colonizer and deserves yeah. to be killed is insane. It's it, yes, it's evil so and it, it's, it's very insane. frustrating, very scary, and and uh, the type of uh, anti-Semitism mm-hmm. that you thought was in generations past and not in the 21st century. No, and I think it also highlights, and many people have been saying this, but hi, how it uh, highlights, excuse me, how maybe for lack of a better word, corrupt or, or indoctrinating college campuses are now. Right. Yeah. That, that, that was the reaction of people that claim to be leaders on college campuses. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, there's been a pretty swift pushback yeah. of you know, yeah. people that thought they had jobs leaving Ivy League schools don't have jobs anymore no. once you say you're in favor of killing children. Yeah. Um, it's funny how that works. But, and, the, and then uh, some yeah, of these CEOs it, it, are getting in trouble. They had the, those CEOs get not in trouble. But they said, you can't blacklist these people and not hire them. Really? I would say I would say they could. Uh, yeah, I would I say it's recommended. certainly within their authority to do so. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's, it does show just how far gone yes. the thinking of people in some of these educational institutions is. And it's all easy when it's all in a book. And it's all right. easy when it's when it's you ranting and raving on college campus about uh, the colonialism or whatever the heck they're bull crap. We'll say bull crap. Thank you. As far as I can go, bull crap is. Um, but then when you see it in real life, yeah, you see kids being slaughtered, and you still are like spouting that bull. Yeah. Well, you're you're warped in the head. Exactly. Like you're you're a you're a, a just messed up and miswired in the head. And it shows that maybe those institutions are corrupt to the core. Joe, let's take a short break because I think we might have just a quick audio issue here. So take uh, just a second with me. Is that okay? Okay. All right. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox. I understand we had a little audio issue right in the middle of talking with Joe. So I have some people out there to tell me if the audio is going over the air or not, Joe? You know, you get a new computer, and so one, two, three, <laughs> you get excited, you get a new computer, and what happens? Yeah, everything it breaks. It's you know. Murphy's law of computers. All right. Yep. Oh, there we go. We got to make it. There we go. There's Joe. All right. All right. We are back on the air, and I just got a message that we are sounding good. All right. So audio, video, back on. Good. Thank you, everybody who reached out. I really appreciate that. We've got a the good fan base. Yep. We the, Frank, the Frank fanatics are watching <laughs> back. I will say that I really appreciate it, and I love that people are watching and let me know and contact our number. Uh, we did have. It's, okay. it's a good sign because if you have an audio issue and nobody notices. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not the best for the ratings. Well, we were talking, obviously, uh, about Israel. And I think Kevin McCarthy was the first one that I noticed who said it, but I'm sure others did. And it really kind of set a chill down my spine. When you think about our open, porous border, are we sitting ducks for something, God forbid, like what happened in Israel? Well, I mean, I know that, like, the leader of Hamas, who, by the way, doesn't live in Gaza. No. lives in Qatar, yeah. you know, in luxury. Yeah, yeah, you know, so exactly. Sort of shows you just, they're not just perverse, they're corrupt. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's talking about, you know, global jihad and, mm-hmm. and what have you. And you worry where the number of people that come through the border. Yes. Who we don't know. And they talk about all the people that, are, that they encounter that are on the terrorist watch list. Those are the ones they encounter. Right. I'm assuming the guys that are that know what they're doing. Are better at it. Yeah. Well, that's it. And so who knows how many terrorists are in the interior of the United States, we just don't know because we don't have a secure border. And I pray to God that there uh, aren't, or they they don't act to hurt American civilians. But but who knows? Yes. If you have just a handful of bad actors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of folks that they don't like these these 
psychos uh, in the United States, and, and who knows what they do. So it is a – the border is a multifaceted issue. It's an immigration issue. Of certainly. course. But it's also a terrorism, global security issue. Mm-hmm. It's a drug trafficking issue. Yep. It's a sex trafficking issue. Mm-hmm. It's it's a multifaceted issue that all of which you can get a better handle on if you just know who's crossing. Right. And then we can make determinations as a country as to who should be coming into the United States for what purpose for how long. Mm-hmm. We can have we have a legislative process right. to deal with that. But you can't really do much with it if if, if people can just walk across. Walk across. Uh, like they can in certain parts of uh, certain parts of the southern United States. And you look at the numbers of that were on terrorist watch list, and like you said, that's that number is already too high. But who snuck through? I mean, that's just the that's ones that we know. know about. Yeah, yeah. That's and then you have it, it, Hamas calling for uh, basically uh, October thirteenth as a, a day to start the quote unquote holy war. You got you know, right. NYPD are all all hands on deck in New York City tomorrow. They all have to be in uniform, and you. It makes you very, very nervous. And I understand yesterday Reuters had a poll about how bad Biden was doing, uh, almost lowest numbers, and that more people are looking at immigration now than they did in the past. I think that only goes up higher when people like McCarthy and so many others speak out and say, wait a minute, think about what happened in Israel. God forbid. Right. If, you know. Well, all the polling shows immigration is now a number one or yeah. number two issue uh, for people. That's what. A lot of people are going to be voting on uh, this November. Right. Uh, that's what a lot of people are going to be voting on next November. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you know the crime issue is related to that, as you say the um, uh, the global uh, security issue is related to that. So though that nexus of issues right. is going to be where a lot of people make their determination as to whether to keep Joe Biden as president or mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. And those are that's a nexus of issues that is not good for the current occupant of the White House. No, what was that piece today? And I can't remember who had it. Did you see that one of the other issues, of course, if it's not immigration, is the age of Joe Biden? And I think, I want to say it was um, Politico, but don't quote me on that. That there were, Yeah, it was Politico. It was like a 10-page thing about how Biden won't directly address the age issue for 2024. Refuses hearing he's aids. Yeah. I mean, he's really old. Yeah. I've met him, and... You know, I was with my wife, and I think I may have told the story before, but yeah. after we met him, you know, I asked my wife, what, you know, what was her take? And the yeah. word she used, this was just off the top of her head, you know, yeah. we had just been with him 10 seconds before, was frail. Yeah. That was that was her. She meets the President of the United States, and she was like, he's frail. Yeah. And my wife was not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, an old person. Mm-hmm. Um, now, he's an old person doing the most stressful, yeah. important job on the planet. Yes. And it is a legitimate thing where you are, we as a society have to hire somebody mm-hmm. to do that job for the next four years. Right. With a year in between. So it's actually technically five years. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, are you really voting for President Harris? Right. Whether he's incapacitated or having, I mean, I don't want any ill will on anybody. Of course not. Thing to happen to any human being. Uh, I'm a Christian. I want people to do. I don't. I don't wish ill on anyone. No, that's 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 not right. But as a practical reality, you have to ask yourself: What are the odds, from just an actuarial perspective, that Mm -hmm. you're really voting for Kamala Harris for president? Yeah, that's a legitimate campaign issue. That's a little legitimate thing we have to talk about, where we're hiring somebody to do the most important job in our society Mm -hmm. and you know joe biden is not doing a good job kamala harris would not do a good job yes and and if that's what you're getting you have to give yourself a a moment to say is that really what i want to vote for yes and i know it was van jones who said you might like well what was it something to the extent of you might like grandpa but you want to give him this the job for five more years of the this stressful level of a job and that's van jones so five years long yes long it's a very long time in politics i mean just think of how the world you know two weeks ago mm-hmm. we weren't talking about a war in israel no, no. two weeks ago just like the speaker of the house just so like there, that <laughs> life comes at you fast yes and if you are you know spending half your time at the beach in delaware yes because you don't have the energy level to do this 24 7 mm-hmm. 
that's an that's a legitimate issue for the voters to to ask themselves alongside all the other issues. So yeah. for him to say it's not legitimate or anything like that, or Democrats to say it's not legitimate, is just yeah. the furthest thing from the truth. Yeah. Uh, the legitimate issues for deciding who the president are are what the people decide. The legitimate issues for deciding the president. Exactly. Let's take another short break, Joe, and we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. <laughs> Welcome back to Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live from the Hesselson Studio. I'm your host, Frank Akum, and joining us over Zoom, former Congressman Joe Semplinski. Joe, it just seems like every time you're on, we have so much to talk about, but you had mentioned it with Joe Biden, the stress of this job. You know, they say that politics, well, like a year is, or a week is a year or whatever. This is something different. Think about what the last month or two has looked like for Joe Biden. There's been a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You have the, the situation in the U.S. House. Yes, which we haven't even talked about yet. All that's going on. You've got uh, the world sort of on fire. And, you know, this, there's a good argument to be made, and I have made it, mm-hmm. that you don't have the war in the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. You don't have yes. the war in Israel if Biden doesn't butcher the pull out of Afghanistan. 100%. When the American president is viewed as weak, mm-hmm. people take advantage of that. And yeah. you really think... Putin invades the Ukraine if he views the American president as vital and strong and dynamic and respected. No. No. Do you really think Hamas butchers 1,200 or more civilians if they respect and fear the American president? No. No, It doesn't happen. And you had the Taliban Mm -hmm. boot us out of Afghanistan. These things are all tied together. It's the same president, so people... Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they sit back and they watch. And the one now you got to watch out for is China. Yeah. We're going, ooh. Yeah. All right. Hamas is doing this. What are they going to get away with? Mm-hmm. Putin's doing this. What's he going to get away with? Well, maybe because we know they want Taiwan back. Yeah. So do they do something there? And and, and then what do we do? How do, Again, you asked the question, I don't know what Biden would do. All right. And, and, and we're certainly, we're depleted. Mm-hmm. We are... Uh, overstretched uh, dealing with national security issues. We can't even secure, as you pointed out in the last segment, our own border. Right. Um, you had members of the sort of ultra radical Islamist groups staying over the last few days. Oh, they literally said it. Oh, America is not what it was 30, 40 years ago. What yeah. are they going to do? Yeah. You know, that's how they are, we are viewed when it's terrifying. the American president projects weakness. Mm-hmm. You know, strength is what leads to peace, peace through strength. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, it's a it's a nasty world out there. And this is, I think, something else that our friends in the perverse academic bubble mm-hmm. don't appreciate. Yes. Yeah, it, it, the world's nice and cushy yeah. when you're in Cambridge, Massachusetts, exactly. New Haven, Connecticut, mm-hmm. or New York City, or Ithaca. Yeah, yeah. And Did you see the guy you're, from you're Cornell? The guy, uh, the diversity and inclusion? Like, you know how they, that's like a title? Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's out there saying the same type of stuff they're saying at Harvard. Right, right. So those folks live in their nice bubble. Yes. And they have no concept of just how nasty hmm. and, and brutal uh, the world outside of the United States right. is. Right. You know, we've gotten very lucky and very cushy uh, uh, compared to how most people have had to live mm-hmm. in history on this planet. Well, think too, and, Joe. I mean, the world is still the world. Think of, uh, you know, like you said, it's very easy to sign on to these letters because in their circle of friends, this is all really, you know, truth to power or whatever, you know, right. they feel like they're the radicals of the 60s. But this is essentially the same group. They, you may even argue that they've gotten worse because they're younger and have went through even more of this indoctrination. But the same group that on election night when Trump won, they had to bring in puppy dogs and crayons to, to ease their mind. I mean, how would they... <laughs> uh, do, before what happened in Israel, how would they deal with living in Israel where at any time Hamas could just, you know, throw a rocket in there and you hope the Iron Dome works? Right, right. You know, these, these are people that uh, it's the end of their world if someone uses the wrong word. Exactly. And it's uh, they, they can't handle that. But yet they run around and tell Israel in what to do. New York City yeah. cheering the butchering of children. It's unbelievable. You know, that, that, that They're... Uh, yeah, they're worried about microaggression. Yes. Yeah. And, and you have thousands of 
people, families being burned alive, slaughtered. Yeah, when that, does that's a, mac, that's a macro aggression? Let's yeah, call that one. yeah. When does when did woke become supporting the the rapists, the murderers, the beheaders? Right. That's what they're literally supporting. They're supporting yeah. the rape of women. Yeah. As a as a tool of war. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. They are supporting that these these people. This is. Um, this is a, a just a, an ideology that's being projected by some elements of academia and the far left uh, that is just it is divorced from any sense of morality. It really is. We have a, a bunch of other things. Joe. I'm going to take another short break because we have to regroup because we're going to change the topic completely and there's no way to segue from that. So if you'll stay okay. with us, we'll, that's fair. Yeah, we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox, our guest, Joe Sempolinski. Joe, I received this. We, we were talking off the air about it, but um, just to give you a heads up, because I received this from a viewer, and thank you to everybody who uh, sends in questions. What is the Republican doing? Uh, Republican Party doing about kind of this, this green energy push? The push is costing everybody money. A lot of people are ill-informed. They think it's the utilities, and it's not. It's the state. And the Republican Party should be beating the drum every month because people get their utility bills every month, which is a very good point. This is actually a very timely question. Because I mentioned earlier on the show, because I talked about uh, Senator Ort going to be at their dinner next week. Right. Um, and I said I was at a meeting with him yesterday. The meeting was we had all of the, uh, and it was Republican and Democrat, all the state legislative offices in Western New York in Buffalo. We were meeting with uh, National Fuel and oh, National wow. Grid, who are the main utilities for yeah. that part of the world. And that was exactly what we were talking about. <laughs> and How the apropos. CLCPA, mm-hmm. the CLCPA is the state climate law, has put what I just what I said to National Grid in the meeting yesterday, ridiculous and impossible <laughs> mandates yes. on the utilities it's true. Uh, to uh, convert entirely to green. And what I've been told by them is not only have they set goals that are ridiculous, they're now constraining how they meet those goals. So mm-hmm. the utilities will come up with something that is you know, a renewable alternative fuel, but because it's not totally electric, it's some sure. sort of something else, they'll say, no, no, you got to do it this way. So they're making it even harder. And the numbers that I was shown as to the cost, yeah, you know, billions of dollars of new infrastructure for the grid, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for people to convert their homes. And I pointed out to folks, man, I live in a home that was, born, that was built before the Civil War. Right. Do you want to convert that? How do you retrofit to, that? You know, yeah. Green energy. I, I'm, that's a year of my salary. Literally, oh yeah yeah if you're lucky so uh, if, yeah exactly <laughs> and and the, the the utility costs are gonna go up so yes this is to be fair to the utility mm-hmm. this is not the utility's idea no they are they're the bearers of bad news when mm-hmm. they send that um, they're even saying it's not possible and, right now and yeah. i will tell you you ain't seen nothing <laughs> yet yes yeah dramatic increases are coming if they fulfill the requirements of this law and they are being told by radical leftists who control the state legislature to do this mm-hmm. because they have a apocalyptic zealotry mm-hmm. about uh, the climate. And so they, they are willing to burn everything down. Yes. Um, uh, and and I, I, again, in the meeting, I pushed back and said, look, how much is it going to cost? And I had Democratic members of the legislature say, well, it would cost much more if we didn't do it. You know, okay. Well, you know, that, that's bonkers you yeah. just create the straw man uh, uh to, to argue against but uh what is coming is the general public doesn't realize just how expensive their energy is going to be right and how intrusive these laws are going to be into day-to-day life of, mm-hmm. you know uh banning new gas hookups uh for buildings uh, uh these sort of things so it is uh, uh new york state has gone completely run amok on this. I will give credit to Assemblyman Palmasano, yes. uh, who uh, your studio is in his district. He is the ranking Republican on the Energy Committee, the mm-hmm. State Assembly, and he is consistently, because as a staffer for the Assembly, I watch the sessions. Right. Everybody should, you know, turn, tune in, fun. Um, watch the sessions in the Assembly Chamber, and he is consistently pointing out just how ridiculous this is. So he's the one that's the point person on this. He does a very good job. He does. Uh, uh, to, to point this out, that is his um, mantra and his, his calling in the assemblies to point out the uh, hypocrisy of this. And and nobody's saying wreck the environment. No. Nobody's saying. <laughs> We're just saying you are setting goals that are completely unachievable and are going to do nothing to help the climate mm-hmm. and are going to hurt 
regular people who are just trying to go about their life and putting costs on them they simply cannot bear. That are already questioning yeah. whether to stay in the state when you've got public Correct. safety issues, you've got so many issues, Correct. and now you're telling me I have to retrofit my house or I can't afford utilities. You're going to retrofit your house yeah. for a good chunk of what it would take to buy a house somewhere else. Yes, yes. What are people going to do? And when you're um, freezing you're in the you're winter. Gonna force, you're going to force them to leave. If you go all electric, God knows what would have happened in Buffalo. Yes. In that blizzard, if they were all elected at that point, you'd have an order of magnitude more deaths. So I can tell folks that, yes, behind the scenes, there are people um, pointing this out mm -hmm. um, on, on the Republican side uh, that, are, that are not giving up on this uh, because of what it will do to average people. The people that the Democrats claim they care so <laughs> yeah, much yeah. about. And the, the average poor, Joe. Yeah. The, the working poor are the ones that are going to get obliterated mm -hmm. uh, by these uh, ridiculous policies. So, um it is it is on one side i want people to feel hopeful that at least the people that represent them in the southern tier have not lost their mind right but yeah. bear in mind uh, there are some ridiculous things coming down the pipeline because the democrats in the state legislature want to govern by press release they mm -hmm. want to get a headline saying yeah. they are fighting for the climate and they have no idea how, how they're going to do it um literally the the plan for to go completely electric you have to massively increase the output and and the plan had uh, a block of that was oh we'll invent new technology <laughs> that's always a good thing to play yeah okay and the block of new technologies was more than the total amount of electricity we create in wow. new york state now so that's because you've got a dramatic so you got to have how, you, like, how do you legislate that more. how do you legislate it, we're gonna invent something amazing yeah we're gonna we'll come up with it we'll depend on yeah worry about it later yeah. <laughs> well we're it, just it makes no sense no we're out well, you, you oh, saw me ahead. literally yesterday afternoon yeah uh this was the meeting i was having in that funny? in my capacity working in the sale like, perfect timing now we're just about out of time and i know people are saying how how, how has this not come up yet what did you think number one we'll make it kind of quick a double part question here the ousting of mccarthy and then you have the speaker's race does it look steve scalise got the knob but will he have the 217 yeah, that's the that's the big question at this point, mm -hmm. um, because the vote between Jordan and Scalise was pretty close. I think it was 113 yeah. to uh, 99. And um, there's also an issue because uh, if you do the math, there are some people that didn't vote for either of them. Right. And uh, there are delegates, you know, like the delegate from Puerto Rico. She can vote in the conference for the nomination. But she can't vote on the floor. Oh, so I there see. Was, he was like he was like right on the edge. He got 50.7 percent of the conference. So now you've already had. Um, I think like eight or nine people say there's not going to vote for him on the floor. Now, what's frustrating about that is he hasn't even had a chance to do the job. Yeah. You know, no. Like Kevin had the job for right. nine months and yeah. you can feel however you feel. But, you know, Scalise hasn't even had a chance to do the job. No. Yeah. He's always and, a bridesmaid, never the bride with that too, isn't he? Yeah. Right. And, and, and I, I will say this um, about Mr. Jordan and Mr. Scalise. Yeah. Both of them. Mm-hmm. Within 24 hours of me being in the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. sought me out on the floor of the House. Oh, wow. And talked to me about, you know, how it was going, what my family was like, what my district was like, both of them. Uh, and again, I wasn't somebody that could vote for Speaker in the next election. Right. I wasn't somebody that's going to be there for the long term because of my unusual Mr. Smith <laughs> goes to Washington interlude. <laughs> um, and, and I was, uh, they made a very positive first impression on me, both of these gentlemen. Yeah. Um, and again, they didn't need to do that. They went out of their way uh, to be very thoughtful and, and caring and, and to the new guy. So I'm not, I'm going to bash either one of these guys. No. What I will say is we need a speaker. We, yes. And, Amen. And I, I am impressed because Mr. Jordan, the way he's handled just missing getting the nomination is he wants to do the nominating speech for Scalise. Yeah. He's, he's whipping votes. For Scalise. Which is great. You have people saying, oh, I'm only going to vote for Jordan. And Jordan is telling them, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. We had a vote. Now we need to rally around our guy. We have to do that. I don't know if it's going to work. No, but. You could imagine a situation where neither of them can get 217 because yeah. they hold out and you have to find some unity compromise candidate from <sighs> out of the blue. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that person exists. Uh, but at this point, the federal government is, is unable to act mm -hmm. um, from a legislative standpoint. Um, that is uh, distressing for the institution. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm hoping that this gets resolved quickly, somehow, yeah. uh, sooner rather than later, and somehow in a way that doesn't allow uh, the Democrats to use it, uh, sneak their guy in there yes. or manipulate this process. That it's a Republican 
speaker chosen by Republicans. I agree. Joe, we are out of time. Thanks for giving me so much time this morning. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. All right. We'll talk again soon. This has been Frankly Speaking. Join us tomorrow morning starting at 7.